I was in Wisconsin many years ago, in 2000, when I finished Andrews. When I went to my church first time, there were, I don't know, 10 people in the church, 15. It was winter. In Wisconsin, that winter, it went down to minus 34. Can you imagine minus 34, 34 below? It was crazy cold. And I go to church. I remember one Sabbath, there were nine people. My family, four and another five. This is practical, real stuff, real life. In the church, all people were between 70 and 92. No offense, I respect elderly. I respect their wisdom. But when you have a church of five people that are 90, what, you know, there is not much hope. I'm sorry. Am I right? It's like, what am I going to do with you guys? Tomorrow you die. <laughs> and I said, what am I doing here? And I went home and I told my wife, I'm going to get out of ministry. This is depressing. And my wife said, you should. And I said, I thought you were going to encourage me. She says, get out of ministry. I said, why? She says, because you don't do what you preach. You just preach it. I said, what do you mean? You just told today that if we really get together and give up everything and give up self and pray together that God, we, we give up self, we die to self, we forget self, we don't even pray for self. I want you to remember in the book of Acts of the Apostles, page 50, 51, Helen White says, when the disciples got together in the upper room, they did not ask a blessing for themselves, though they had needs. They, don't, they didn't even think about self. They surrender self. My grandpa would tell me, if you don't forget self, you still worship self. So my wife said, you should get out of ministry because you don't live what you preach. Oh, I don't like when she does that. She has a tendency to once in a while to do it, you know. And she said, you need to get them together. I said, who? The five dying ladies? And she said, yes. You need to get them together and pray together that God will resurrect the church. I said, he's dead. There is nothing to resurrect. And she shook her head and said, you should get out of ministry. And I knew that she was right. So I talked to the ladies. Do you want to pray? They said, yeah. And I said, in the morning. I said, when should we meet? And one of the ladies, 92 years old, she says, 5 a.m.? I said, no, maybe 9. <laughs> and the lady said, no, 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 pastor. We don't sleep too much in the night. When you get to our age, then she went on and on talking and shaking her head. And she said, six, pastor, is that okay with you? I said, okay, 6 a.m. You wake up minus 34 Fahrenheit at 5 to be at the church at 6. You get in the car and the car is frozen and you clean the windshield the, of ice and your hands freeze and you're like, Ugh, you know, and you hate that you have to get out. And you get in the car and you try to, basically you freeze just by touching the steering wheel. And by the time you get to the church, finally the car starts to warm up, but you have to turn it off. And until you finish the prayer meeting, the car is cold again. It was not comfortable. But we, I got there and the five ladies were there waiting for me. And we prayed together. And I told them, we are not going to pray for self. Pastor, but we have needs. I am sick. I said, yeah, you have been sick for a long time, I see. <laughs> and I said, we are going to find time when we pray for another. This time, the Bible says that when two or three pray together in one accord, you know what that means? Agreement. Ellen White explains. She says, unity of purpose. They pray for one thing. They unite. They forget everything else. They give up. They surrender. They give up everything else. And they all unite for one purpose. They say, Lord, we do have a bunch of needs. But we are going to give up all the other things. And we are going to pray for this. And she says that the disciples gave up everything else. And prayed for the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. They prayed, she says, quote, for the promise. She calls the Holy Spirit the promise because Jesus promised to send the comforter, you remember? 
And she says, when we pray together in unity for one purpose, that unity, God answers. And the Bible says, when two or three pray in one accord, it will be given to them. So I told the ladies, I said, we are not going to pray for everything else. We are going to pray that God is going to resurrect this church. And we prayed for a month, every morning at six. Do you think it was comfortable in the winter in Wisconsin? It was not. I was hoping from the heart that after a month they say, okay, we did 30 days, enough. But you know, they said, no, pastor, can we pray another 30? And they said, why would you want to do that? And they said, since we started to pray, though we didn't pray for self, since we pray and plead for the church to be resurrected, our kids started to call us, our grandchildren started to call, and people started to come and visit us, and our family started to improve. So we really sense that since we pray, God is blessing, and we don't want to stop. And we kept praying together based on Jesus' promise. Very uncomfortable praying together every morning at 6. And after three months, the church had 120 or more people every Sabbath in attendance. And we didn't do evangelism, we didn't do Bible studies yet, we didn't. When we started evangelism, we baptized an average of 20, 30. In a church that used to have to be 20 members, you baptized 20, you know, it was like pff, doubling the church. You follow me? And the church kept growing and growing and growing and growing. Because we prayed together for the outpouring of the Holy Spirit over our church.